Hello, this is my week eight visual text reflection. Um, I just wanted to first acknowledge the amazing um, peaceful protests that are going around across our um, cities nationwide. And um, also wanted to acknowledge that people don't need to be looting and doing things to people's businesses to ruin more lives. But I do really highly respect the Black Lives Matter movement and the peaceful protests that they are advocating for across our nations. I really think they're helping people take notice. Um, to dive into the reflection, um, I wanted to start off with the interview with the founders of Black Lives Matter. Um, and the first quote I wanted to talk about was when Patrice Con Cullors says, Black Lives Matter is a tool to reimagine a world where black people are free to exist, free to live. It is a tool for our, for our allies to show up differently for us. And I think this just speaks to how people see Black Lives Matter as just like a way for black people to come together, but when really it's a way for all people to come together and acknowledge for human rights and African-American rights across our nation, which I think is a really powerful movement. And I think it is reforming the way people advocate for equal treatment of all citizens in America. And I think, um, especially now in harsh times like so, um, we really all need to just come together and be allies and advocate for equal treatment. Um, but obviously these issues are not just national, they are international. And I wanted to pull a quote from Opal Tometi that states, the global reality is that black people are subject to all sort of disparities in most of our most challenging issues of our day. T Tometi's quote um, to me is really important just because most people think that this maltreatment of African Americans just occurs in America. And it actually just goes beyond the African American population. It goes to, it speaks to the limited access to basic needs in Africa and just international issues that aren't recognized by the average person in America that do need to be recognized and that are relevant to the situation. Um, and then my last quote from the interview is, um, we have to stop treating leaders like superheroes. We are ordinary people doing extraordinary th things. And that's by Alicia Garza. And I think a lot of our issues today have to do with leadership and have to do um, with how we view our leaders. And we need to respect that the leaders of these movements are trying to do whatever they can. And obviously with looting and burning things, it's, it's not the best way, but they are trying and they really are. Um, and I think that all these protests are producing a net positive and a net awareness for all Americans to take note of what's really happening. Um, so I just, I just wanted to acknowledge that these leaders of these movements are making a great stand. Um, and then I sort of wanted to move to the 13th documentary, uh, which is a quote about how African Americans were treated back in the day. And I think it sort of relates to something that's going on today. And it's by uh, John Ehrlich, uh, Ehrlichman, uh, Nixon's advisor, when he states, we knew we couldn't make it illegal to be either against the war or black, the war on drugs or blacks. But by getting the public to associate with the hippies with marijuana and blacks with heroin, and then criminalizing both heavily, we could disrupt those communities, Ehrlichman said. We could arrest their leaders, raid their homes, break up their meetings, and vilify them night after night on the evening news. Did we know we were lying about the drugs? Of course we did. I think this quote speaks to just how um, black people are misinterpreted by people of power. Even in today's society, people on an everyday basis see them as a threat. Um, and just want to criminalize all of their actions in order to feel safe, which is truly unfair. And that's what happened here with Nixon's uh, administration. They just wanted to have a scapegoat. They wanted to put black people away. So they made an alternate, um, alternate issue to do that. And I think that is just a terrible, terrible um, and sad way to go about it. And then another quote from Angela Davis that was really powerful to me. She stated, what does it mean to be a criminal in this society? And 
that was interesting to me because she was criminalized for standing up, for advocating. And I don't think I could imagine what that would be like if that happened in today's society. So criminalizing black people for their ad, for advocating for themselves and for e equal rights must not be seen as a criminal act. It must be seen as human rights activism that our country, quote, prides itself on. So I just wanted to conclude there. Uh, thank you for watching.